Let's talk about your provident fund. PF is the only option for the salary class to save their hard-earned money and build their retirement corpus. No wonder many people believe that PF is the safest retirement planning scheme. And today on the AT Money Show, we will be joined by Anupandya, founder Money Edu School, to help you understand all that you need to know about your provident fund. All right, so uh, Anna, welcome to the show and good evening. Before I question you about the new uh, 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 pension uh, uh, regime or where people can get more pension in their hand. Let's just understand the basic factors on how your provident fund is calculated and how do you get the benefit of it. So uh, a salaried employed uh, individual uh, usually uh, has to uh, 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 share some portion of their salary as a PF, uh, amount that goes under the provident fund. And there's also an employer share that that gets counted into. Uh, what is the entire calculation and, and what is uh, in terms of percentage, the amount that gets into uh, the provident fund? Good evening. So let us now first understand the entire structure of the Provident Fund. So there are two parts to the entire uh, Provident Fund contributions. One, which is known as the EPF, which is the Employees Provident Fund, is one part, which is where the monthly uh, amount gets accumulated and it's like a wealth creation option. The second part is also an Employees Pension Scheme. So there is also something called an EPS linked to the Provident Fund. So first look at it from the point of view of the employee. So if you are an employee and say you are in the private sector, you have to contribute 12% of your uh, pay to the EPF. Now understand that your entire 12% here will go into the Provident Fund corpus, so which is known as the EPF. So entire 12% goes to the Provident Fund, 0% from the employee goes to the pension part. Now let us come to the employer's part. Now the employer is also contributing 12%, but here what happens is the employer first has to contribute 8.33% of the employee's salary to the pension part. So the EPS gets 8.33%, but only up to a ceiling of 15,000. So for 15,000, 8.33% comes to 1250. So if there is an employee whose salary is less than 15,000, then 8.33% of this goes to the pension part. While for people who have a salary above 15,000, the cap is at 1250 currently so 1250 of the employer's contribution comes here and the remaining amount will go to the employees provident fund part so this is how the breakup is remember very clearly that the employee doesn't contribute to the pension part only the employer does and the entire part of the employee's contribution goes to the provident fund part now the pension part is important because this is the area where if you are eligible, then at the time of your retirement, after that, you will start getting a pension based on the working of the EPS. Okay, now let's talk about the pension that you will get in your hand. Uh, what is the new uh, calculation for it and who all uh, can actually avail this? Because not everyone will be uh, getting an increased pension amount. Yes. So now we, when we come to the pension calculation, the pension calculation is made in a particular manner. So this is, if you want to know the exact way it is which it is calculated, then it is equal to the pensionable salary. Yeah. He worked by 70. So for example, the maximum amount of period for which a person can work is 35 years. So under the, and there is a capping here also. So the pensionable salary or based on which the pension is calculated is capped at 15,000 rupees. So the maximum pension that one could get is 15,000 multiplied by 35 by 70, which comes to 7,500 per month. Now, this is as per the old calculation. Now, there was an amendment in the year 2014, which said that any employee who joins after September 1, 2014, and whose salary is more than 15,000, 
would not be able to get a pension under the EPS. Now, this amendment which was made was struck down by several high courts across the country. So the matter went to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court has recently given a judgment which has said that this amendment will stand, which means that any employee who joins after September 1, 2014 will not be able to get the benefit of the uh, pension scheme. Second is, the judgment also says that the pensionable salary based on which the calculation is made will remain at 15,000. But there is one exception which has been made, and this is the important part because it is for these people for whom the pension calculation will change and it, this will increase. So it says that there are many people who have joined before, uh, say, September 1, 2014. So for these people, they have an option that if their salary is more than 15,000, they could contribute more and get a higher pension. So for these people, they still have an option of four months from the date of the judgment to continue with this kind of additional contribution so that they can get a higher pension. Now for anyone who falls into this category, the pension which they will get will obviously be higher because there is no capping of 15,000. So for example, if you have say a salary of 40,000 per month at the time of retirement based on the calculations and you work for say 35 years, then according to the calculation, your pension will come to 20,000. 20, so this was earlier capped at 7,500, which for this specific category of people who opt for giving a higher contribution to the employee pension scheme will be eligible for a higher pension. Now, the there is one more technical detail here that when earlier this kind of higher contribution option was approved, it was said that the employees have to contribute 1.16% due to for the higher contribution. Now, the Supreme Court has said that you cannot take this additional uh, amount from the employees because remember that in the employee pension part, there is actually not supposed to be any contribution from the employee. But it's only the employer's contribution. So this part, which has uh, been struck down, the Supreme Court has given the EPFO a period of six months to ensure that they come up with a new working so that the additional pension, which people above 15,000 who have opted for this, there is some way to fund it. Because if that is not done and there is no contribution, then the corpus will be drawn down just to pay the higher pension. So overall, what will happen is that in the next few months, we will see the EPFO come out with detailed guidelines on all this part about how the higher pension for those who are in employment or who have joined before September 2014, how that will be calculated and how that will be funded. So what, what about those people who want to get a higher pension? How can they avail this? Are there any documents or submissions that needs to be done within a particular time frame? So for those who have joined before this amendment came in, which is before uh, 2000, September 2014, they have a period of four months to ensure that they get or they enroll themselves. For this, what they need to do is that they need to submit a joint declaration with their employer saying that they have agreed for this kind of higher contribution towards the pension scheme. And the other thing is that till the time the employer EPFO works out a, another way of funding this kind of higher pension, the contribution which has to be made by the employee, which is 1.16%, which was decided then, that will have to be made. So if you, for example, if you have not joined and you today say that I want to be a contributor and get a higher pension because I was in employment before this cutoff period, then you will have to contribute the entire amount for the period uh, that you are eligible for this. So that much has to be kept in mind, but they, these people are the ones who will be eligible and a new working will come soon which will then clarify this entire matter. But overall, this judgment is a way in which the entire issue which has been hanging uh, in confusion has been sorted out 
so that now there is a clear way forward those people who are not into the workforce uh, post uh, September 2014, uh, uh, they have opened their pension account, they've been contributing before that. Uh, how can they avail for it? Do they have to go to the employer, reach out to the employer and then contribute the rest of the amount? Yes, so the question is that those who were there in employment earlier and are right. eligible, hmm. do you want to, and your salary is more than 15,000 because right. the cap is 15,000, hmm. do you want to join this and get a higher pension when you retire or you want to look at other options because see now what has happened is that if you look at the overall scenario even for an employee there are so many other options available in the market which can help you get a pension and the amount of pension which you would get from this uh, scheme is not adequate to meet all your requirements because obviously people have a higher need for funds so now today you have the nps which is a specific retirement product which can get you the pension. Then also you have various mutual funds wherein you can accumulate amounts. So it's a question of a choice that if you want to go for this scheme, this is the kind of working which will be there. But if you want to have a higher rate of return because you have time on your side and you're willing to take some risk, then there are other options also available in the market wherein you can create a retirement portfolio which is more suitable for you. In any scenario, scenario, you think the employer can actually decide not to pay the increased pension? So the pension comes from the EPFO. Hmm. The employer's part is restricted to just contributing the amount which they have to contribute. Okay. Okay. So that contribution limit has been fixed at 15,000. So that is not going to change. So at least they know the employer knows that this is the amount up to 15,833, which is the maximum amount which I have to contribute. So the moment the employer contributes that, their part is over. The amount then goes to the employee pension scheme and the, it's the problem or it's the, uh, uh, the pension scheme which will have to pay out the pension at the time of retirement. Now, what about people uh, uh, who open their uh, PF account post-2014 because then they are the new people in the workforce and obviously they don't have this kind of a, uh, 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 privilege in their hand. But then uh, not sure if it's exactly a privilege because you, ha you, 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 give a very, you get a very minimum amount when it comes to pension. Uh, uh, how should uh, these people, I mean, not only them, I mean, it, it's applicable even for people who uh, uh, are a part of this decision and who are benefiting from this decision uh, a retirement portfolio needs to definitely be designed by any kind of a person and any kind of individual everyone should be thinking about it as a very important financial goal and not be reliable only on their pf amount which by default a lot of indians and traditionally mindset that people have is to uh, get the money from their pf and then later on either invest it or buy anything in real estate uh, how important it is uh, for, for for this mindset to change even after this kind of a decision even after benefiting from this decision it is still not enough your retirement corpus still won't be enough so there are two points here one is that the provident fund part continues so that is not affected so even if you have joined after september 2000 the contribution to the provident fund goes that amount is accumulated and that will come to you now for those who have joined after September 2014, if your salary is more than 15,000, then obviously from the employee pension scheme, you will not get a pension, which means that in effect, for if you want to plan for pension and which you have to, because retirement is a big goal, there is a large corpus which is required, you will have to look at other alternative options and which is where your entire retirement planning comes into force. So this is where you will have to look at uh, for various debt and equity options wherein, as I said, that there is the National Pension Scheme, NPS, which is there. You have to choose the fund manager. You have to choose your equity and debt exposure. And then uh, see whether you want to go in for an active option or the default option and the kind of account you want to open. At the same time, you can also contribute to other traditional avenues like the pro public provident fund, which can be a proxy for the debt exposure for your retirement planning. In addition, you have various mutual funds which are there. And these mutual funds, again, if since you have a long time frame towards retirement, you can effectively build a corpus through effective wealth creation using a mixture of equity, debt, hybrid funds, depending on exactly your age, your 
uh, amount required, the amount which you are about to contribute. So there are so many options available, but for newer employees, it is most essential that this kind of corpus, they will have to build on their own and then use that as a measure for getting regular income when they retire. All right, so that was uh, a lot in depth about uh, your Provident Fund. Thank you so much, Anna, for making time and explaining this to our viewers.